off. Certainly. What about Woodrow Wilson? Was was he as violently opposed to the constraints of the Constitution well, as Lincoln? Well, it's interesting. Lincoln? Woodrow Wilson was a notorious racist. Woodrow Wilson uh, segregated the federal government and segregated the military, which had been integrated from Reconstruction up to the era uh, of Woodrow Wilson. He was an old-fashioned Protestant Virginia racist who migrated north to attend Princeton University and become the president of Princeton. I am myself a graduate of Princeton, so it's a little bit heretical to, for a Princetonian to criticize Woodrow Wilson. <laughs> You're going to hear it today on Twitter. And, and then, of course, he becomes uh, the governor of New Jersey for just 18 months uh, when, he, when he runs for president. But he and his Republican pal, though they hated each other, Theodore Roosevelt, had a very interesting view of the Constitution. Their view of the Constitution was it permits the federal government to do whatever the times demand and whatever the president and the Congress agree on, except what is expressly prohibited in the Constitution. That is the exact opposite view of the framers, who basically said in the Tenth Amendment, you can only do what we have expressly authorized you to do, and all other governmental powers belong to the states or to the people. So they basically turned the Constitution on its head and began doing all sorts of things, like the Federal Reserve, like a progressive income tax, like nations. changing the way uh, U.S. senators uh, are elected, like buying stealing land to build uh, national parks, like establishing the FBI after Congress had decided not to do it. They did all kinds of things on their own, believing that the president was a sort of prince who could get away with whatever, whatever he wanted except that which was prohibited in the and, document. And as you mentioned, Judge, these, these two men were political opponents, and they came from remarkably different backgrounds. How is it that they arrive at this, this same interpretation of what they can do or this just general disregard for the Constitution? Was this supported by, well, by they, contemporary voters? Th yes, it was supported by contemporary voters. Their, their um, march toward progressivism, arguably begun by Theodore Roosevelt and concluded uh, by uh, Woodrow Wilson because the country returns to a period of sanity in, in the 20s, that is, the government stops expanding a little bit, uh, was very much approved by the voters. That, of course, doesn't justify it because a lot of what they did stole property and stole liberty. They utterly became the tyrants of the, uh, of the majority. One was a Republican, one was a Democrat. Though they hated each other, they agreed on all policy decisions. And you know what? It gives people a lot to think about this President's Day, this, this segment alone. People are, are going to be confused well, and they're going to be rethinking their, their principles Obama, and their President desires. President Obama is the natural heir of Theodore uh, and Woodrow. But even they would be scandalized by what he's attempting to do in their names. What's your next book? Uh, my next is book. Is it a secret? No, no, no. My next book is called Suicide Pact, The Constitution and the Radical Expansion of Presidential Power After 9-11. It's coming out as a 100-page NYU Law School Law Review article next month and a 350-page HarperCollins book in the spring. I don't know how you find the time, but it's I love a, a how you love. pour your, your wisdom into these conversations and these books. Thank you, Judge. Thanks for giving me this outlet. Absolutely. All the best to you. Very Thank good. You.